Thank you all for coming. Uh, we have our, our big panel here at the uh, Build Expo here. This is Making the Perfect Pitch, powered by the Eddie Adams Workshops. When we were just conceiving what was going to happen on the educational side of the Build Expo, um, I've been, I'm always in daily, weekly talks with a good friend of mine, Miriam Evers, who is the uh, executive director with the Eddie Adams Workshops. Stand up. And uh, now we're in their 36th year, and we were talking about, you know, they've put on some amazing panels, have amazing speakers, and we knew we wanted to offer a panel for you out there that can help you. We've had this question so many times already that I've bumped into people in the hallways, I've talked with speakers, and they're like, how do I get my work out there? How can I be seen beyond our simple social realms right here? And the power of Eddie Adams is that they've been working with some of the finest editors at, out there, uh, editors, photographers, producers out in the market, and we have really assembled an all-star team here up for you. Miriam introduced me to Sarah Lean, Sarah Lean has been amazing to work with, and then she really, I am the, the warm recipient of all this kindness and generosity from everyone, but Sarah was the one that kind of took this to the next level. And really, this is here for you. We're gonna, we have some, a lot of questions here for the panel. They're gonna go through their discussion, but then we're gonna leave some time uh, for you to get your answers, uh, your questions answered as well. Also again, reminder that a lot of these editors uh, and photographers are also in the portfolio review. Who's been to the portfolio reviews already? Okay, so there are, it's going on again tomorrow from 11 to 2, and from uh, it's 11, to two, 11 to 1 and 2 to 4. And so think about what you're going to learn today and uh, bring in your, your work tomorrow and get some, get, get, get some help along the way. All right, I'll leave it to you. Thank you, Gabe. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, I just want to say a, a big thank you to B and H, and especially Gabe Biederman, who um, invited us all here to be together to have this conversation with you, and especially Miriam Evers, who's the executive director at Eddie Adams Workshop. All of us have taught and teach at the Eddie Adams Workshop, so this is really coming from the heart of that workshop, which is so amazing. There's, they have a table right out there that is awesome to go talk to them if you want to find out more about Eddie Adams. And I have to do my pitch here. So if you, they're up here, please come and get one. Do. Uh, a photograph of the little scanny thing that's here, and you will maybe win something special from Canon or Think Tank, who makes really great bags, and um, Deanne Fitzmorris, the founder of it, is also here speaking in one of the stages today. Or tomorrow. Tomorrow? tomorrow? Tomorrow. Okay. So, I'm going to do super brief interviews. Uh, if you have the little B&H booklet that they handed out, all them are all the interviews are in there, so I'll just do some something quickie. First, I have Olivier Laurent, rock star, international climate health issues at the Washington Post. He was at one time at the uh, associate editor at the British Journal of Photography, uh, at Time Magazine, uh, really ahead of their time with uh, Light Lightbox. Uh, it was a great like like photo blog, really amazing. And I'm super happy to have him here, who is also an editor at Eddie Adams. <laughs> Olivier, my dear friend and co-founder of the Visual Thinking Collective, Elizabeth Christ. Uh, Elizabeth was a photo editor at the National Geographic for 20 years? Over, oh, over 20, <laughs> over 20 years. And she's amazing. She's probably the most connected person that I know in New York City. She knows everybody. If I have a question, I call Elizabeth. Uh, and she's a really fine photo editor, coach, mentor, teacher, etc. So try to get a piece of her while you're here. <laughs> she may run for you. She's, she's a little shy, maybe. Kurt Mutchler, who has been a photo editor at the National Geographic for 40? 40? 40? 
Not that long. <laughs> Under 40, but more than 30. Just shy of 30. Okay. Uh, he has, uh, he is a, the most incredible science photo editor that I know. Um, he was actually my photo editor when I was photographing for the Geographic. He's so smart. He can figure anything out. And he, ta he can take on the most difficult topics and make them visual. He's... Uh, the title has changed a couple of times recently. Do we... Science... Senior science editor photo manager, editor at large. He's got them all. And he's like amazing and he's doing portfolio reviews and I hope you can get over there and get a chance to see him and talk to him about your work. <laughs> Denise Kennan is the director of visuals and something. So I'm gonna get here in a minute. And multimedia. Uh, and she is at the Philadelphia Inquirer an old alma mater of mine. I worked at the Philadelphia and kind of like, you know, she might have been in kindergarten when I was there, but yes. She's an, uh, uh, been at coming to Eddie Adams for two, three years now. Yep. She also is a teacher at the Kalish, which is also a really great photo editing workshop and uh, works with multimedia journalism at the National Association of Black Journalists. And you should follow her on Instagram, on Twitter, she's at Denise Kennan, that's K-E-N-O-N. -N. Uh, she's a fantastic teacher, and she's become uh, a dear friend. I'm so happy to have her here. She's been on uh, one previous, or two previous pitch panels that we've done in the past. And India, if you weren't here the, the, an hour ago, well, I'm really sorry, you missed out, because <laughs> India is a, a, a star. She is a, her work, her thought process, her delivery, I mean, she's an artist that tells stories with her work. And she's a fine, fine teacher and, um, and a beautiful human being. So welcome to my incredible panel. Now I really need the air conditioning. Okay, so, where's my, all right. So first of all, I thought maybe we would start with, what is a pitch? And thank you, Kurt Mutchler, for coming up with that question. Um, so kind of like, what are we talking about when we're talking about pitching? I'm just going to take everybody, go around the room. Why don't you start, Olivier? Um, OK, so what is a pitch? For me, it's really you're trying to, uh, to create excitement uh, for the story. You're trying to really get. You, you know, we like photo editors. We get a lot of, of pitches. We get a lot of emails. We get a lot of. We meet with a lot of photographers, and often the first few sentences that you even write or tell us is what is going to grab our attention. Uh, and this is, for me, like the pitch is being able to tell that story in a couple of sentences and being able to sell that story in a couple of sentences. It's the cliche of the elevator pitch of like if you're like in in the elevator with the photo editor that you ever like you always wanted to work with what are you going to say in those like 15 seconds that allow you to continue that conversation once the door opens Elizabeth well for me a pitch is basically here is my idea do you like it will it work for you <laughs> and now i'm going to talk you into it and persuade you to say yes I would also say that a pitch can be, sometimes we're talking about pitching to a publication, but it could be that you are wanting to show your work to a gallerist or to a, a museum. Or even, you, I would say, look at the pitch as even when you're doing a portfolio review, because you're pitching yourself. Kurt? I, I think a pitch, uh, what really it comes down to is, um, saying, if you hire me, this is what I can do for you. And, um, it, you know, so you're, you're selling that so that I want it. I want to I wanna buy that idea. I want to buy your creativity and your passion for that story. So really, it's, it's I know what I can do for you as a, a working at National Geographic, but what can you do for me? And I think that's probably the most basic uh, aspect of a pitch. Denise? Um, it's details for me. 
Because if I if they say I have a story for you and you're still talking three minutes later, you don't have a story. You have an idea. Um, so I want to know details. I also want to know like what's it going to cost me, right? Because mm -hmm. if I have ten minutes to decide, if I'm in between meetings and you happen to catch me between meetings, and you give me the pitch and I'm like, hell yeah, that sounds great. How much is that going to cost me uh -huh. to produce? You know, because we're talking about travel, we're talking about all the things. How long are you going to be away from your desk? Mm -hmm. You know, how much is this going to cost me in time and travel? I want you to know, or at least a good lie, like make it up on the spot, you know, so <laughs> that I know that you've actually thought about it. Um, because if it's going to cost me, you know, $7,000 to produce, it may not be good for me, but maybe you should produce, pitch it to so-and-so, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. if I can't take it, I may send you somewhere, so have mm -hmm. the answer. Mm -hmm. Great, great answer. India. This is the thing about going last, right? After all this greatness, you have to like. I'll go back uh, the other way. I'll go back the said, other way. Sum it all up. Um, you know, <laughs> as an artist, curator, I'm interested in innovation, right? How have you remixed an idea? How have you taken it further? Are you telling me the same story I've seen before? Are you telling me something new? something that's innovative, something that's your own, that you changed and made it that way. And so I think that's what I'm looking for when people pitch work, yes. Great, thank you. Denise, um, you said something interesting, maybe we'll follow up on that. You talked about you have an idea versus a story. Can you say more about that? Yeah, like I get, I get ideas a lot. Denise, I wanna do a story on blah, blah, blah. I'm like, great, like have you done the research on that? Right? And they'll be like, well, no, I just think it's a great story. I was like, it is a great story, but what were the details? And so, um, you know, you have a great idea, but I need to know you can actually pull it off. Um, so I'll give you an example. One of my videographers pitched a story on ballroom culture, and I was like, ballroom? Like, ballroom? And he's like, no, Denise, ballroom. Like, the, the community, all this. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And so he came back and showed me a clip. I was like, I'm all the way in, baby. <laughs> like, I'm, I was all, like, because I didn't know it wasn't from my own experience or something that I didn't, that I could relate uh -huh. to or something that I even really knew a whole lot about. So he had to show me. Uh -huh. And I was like, uh -huh. oh, yeah. yeah. Like, well, as soon as I saw it, I knew it. That's so, so important. I, I yeah. want to come back to that. Talk about a little, Kurt, about an idea versus a story. Do you have some thoughts on that? Well, what... In, in many cases, right, I, when, it, when you asked me to be on this panel, I, I wasn't thinking about having any interpersonal conversation, right? It's like a pitch, like for example, in-house right now, a pitch is um, uh, what is the story in one sentence? Uh, why, why now? Why now? In one sentence. And, uh, it, it's it's really tough to boil an idea down to something that's succinct. Mm -hmm. But um, I I think you know it's it's harder to write short than it is to write long. For sure. And I and I think that's um, you know I got a pitch yesterday uh, an email. Don't know the photographer. It was three three single page uh, space pages uh, and. <laughs> It was, you know, I look at that, I, you know, I, I love photographers and, and I, I love their ideas, but th that looked like homework to me. And, it, we, you know, so don't, don't send homework to who you're seeking uh, um, the, the pitch. But uh, so if you, c even if you're working on a project at home over a long period of time, it's really smart to have a working headline and a working deck. You go, well, what's that? It's that, what is the story in that brief form? Can really help you articulate what you're going to do uh, going into the field and, and working it over time. So I, if I, a good pitch for me is a working head, working deck, and 10 pictures. Good. I, yeah, I, had, go ahead. Uh, I studied journalism and um, when, when I was at university, so best lesson that I ever had was not from a journalism class, but from a politics class where the professor would take an economist article and you know the economists, like their articles are super <laughs> long, super detailed, and he would ask every single week, summarize this article in 150 words. You're allowed one more or one less, no more than that. 
and you had to make every single point of that article in that summary. This was like the most valuable lesson I've ever had. Being able to, to really bring all of the argument into a very short text. And that's something that I continue to use today and that photographers need to know to do that. If you're gonna send three pages of text, that should be like all of the details that you have, like if we want to read more. At the top of those three pages, they should be like three sentences that sells me on that idea and make me want to read the three other pages. But if you don't have that at the top, we're not gonna read the three pages because we get hundreds of emails every single day. I also think, whenever I think about a pitch, I think about distilling it into three really um, key points. One is, why us? You know, why are we the right publication or the right outlet or the right, uh, you know, venue for this particular idea? And then, why you? What are your credentials? You know, what are you bringing to us, as uh, Kurt said? And why now? You know, why is this the particularly right time, you know, that we should be working on this story? You, um, you mentioned 10 photos. So with a photo, with a pitch, do you uh, want to see that they've already started the project and they have some images to share with you? Denise, you mentioned how that clip really turned it around for you. Can you all say more about that? It depends on the pitch. Um, for me anyway, I mean, we're, sometimes my staff will pitch to me and they have not started it, they want the green light to start it because it's gonna take a lot of time and resources. Um, but sometimes they've already started and I like, you can see the passion, right? You can see the passion in the way they explain it and in the, in the imagery. Um, but, but in terms of like direction, you're like, I like this, but what about if we move a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left? Um, so I, I actually like having some photos um, because I know that you've been thinking about it and you've been seeing is this actually viable um, in your mind and in practice. So I, I, I particularly like it, but I have taken them, I have greenlit projects without them beginning just because they were so intriguing. Mm -hmm. and India, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. And having photos like tells us like if you're able to do this, like and tell us also what style you're gonna bring to that story. Definitely, I was thinking from, because some people will pitch to museums or curators and I think for many curators and museums, we're interested in not only seeing the pitch, but also seeing how it aligns with our director of education. Like, look at the institution and see what else are they doing with the work, because they're gonna show your work in a gallery, but then they're gonna have educational programming to coincide with that. And so they wanna make sure that you're bringing something that they can also educate with and also enlighten their audience with. And so when you're pitching your work, you wanna add those things specifically with the museums and curators. Yeah, no, but, but I think that applies to, to magazines and newspapers as well because what what you said is you need to know that institution that you're pitching to you need to know what they want what they usually publish what they've already published because if you're going to send the exact same work that they just published oh bad yeah <laughs> Very bad. you're basically saying two things one i didn't look at your publication Oops. and like and as a result like i don't care right uh kurt you were talking about um you know getting those 10 images does that make, is there a big difference for you between someone whose work you know and somebody who's new to you in terms of how you'd like to see their pitch? Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know somebody, you have a legacy with them. Uh, they've maybe done stories um, before, so you know they can deliver. Uh, you like the way they see, uh, the way they think, um, for sure. And But I, I think since, since we're here in this hall, uh, at, at B and H, you know, I'm I'm doing portfolio reviews, and uh, if you're a really smart photographer, you have the presentation down, because you you get me, you get all these people up here for 15 minutes. I not, mean, that's not much that's time. gold, right? Yeah. That's gold. So uh, yeah, uh, there are a lot of photographers who I see every year at a portfolio review. And each time I send them away, well, you know, that was good, but how about this? Why don't you prove the, on that? And they're not, they're undeterred, and they come back again, and they come back again. And um, it's a, a true story. A, a photographer came back again and again, and she got an assignment on, for online, and now she's finishing up her first print story. So, um, you know, 
pursuing it because it's your passion really helps sell a pitch. And, and Olivia, for you, if you know the photographer versus somebody new and you don't know them and they send you a pitch, do you want to see the image? You want to see images? You, you, I, I always want to see images. And even if it's like if you haven't started a project, I want to see what you've done before that would inform um, how you would do this particular project. Um, you know, like so if, if I don't get photos in the pitch, so the first thing I will do is look up your website or your Instagram to see those photos. So you might as well make it easy for me. Like have those email, like those, those photos in the email or at least a link directly to it on your website so I don't have to search for it. I wanted to say to new, new, new photographers out there, photo editors typically have a list of up and coming mentally, right? Like there's, there are people I'm following on Instagram right now where I'm like, oh, not yet, but their work is like, it's going to be amazing, right? And so we're watching constantly, at least I am, I might be weird, I don't know. Um, but constantly looking at the new kids on the block. Um, but what I would say is, I feel like when I go to portfolio reviews, a lot of times I see what you think I want to see, you know, like the traditional meal that you feed a photo editor, but your Instagram sometimes is so much more interesting, right? And so I'll be like, yeah, 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 to the sport, the spot news, and to the general news, but that skateboarding story on your Instagram, can you tell me about that? So we are always like mining for jewels, you know, and it's very, like we want you to be who you are, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of conforming to what you think we want, because who you are is so much more interesting. Um, and I like today, I had somebody bring prints. I was ecstatic. I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> Threw them on the floor. You know, yeah, like just yeah. be who you are. I don't want you to change because of what you see in the inquirer. I want, I want us to make room for you and for yeah. what your vision is. I think this is so important. A p important note to, for all of you to remember is like if you're coming to, you think you have an idea of say what the Washington Post does and wants or what National Geographic does or wants, but it's that work that's your passion work that could be your personal work. I mean, I think that's what can really get you over the top with a lot of editors. Yeah, and I like, you know, we, we all want to discover new voices and we all want to, to experiment and to you know, do something differently. And so if you come to us with like, oh, the Washington Post, they only publish this, so I'm gonna do a portfolio that just those kind of photography, this is like, for me, it's almost like wasted time during those portfolio. I want to be able to go back to the newsroom and say, I discovered this new photographer with like this vision and it's gonna be amazing and, like that's what I want to, to, to get out of a portfolio review. I also think it's just really important to make sure when you do portfolio reviews, it's such an investment of your time and the editor's time, that you make sure your Instagram and your website are all up to date and curated and you know, you just want to make sure that when they go back and they have your name and they check it, that you really are showing your best self to them. Yeah, I think, uh, well, we're, we're talking a lot here about portfolio reviews, but the portfolio review is really kind of a pitch. And it's also the one time where you're gonna get face time with a lot of these people that you're just not gonna get any other way. And it's so great for p us to be able to meet you as a person. So not only we're seeing that PDF and the pitch and the photographs, but we're seeing the human being, which is so important. Uh, and it's why we're here. The whole idea of like, we wanna see new work. We wanna see what people are doing. Uh, that's our, that's the job, is to f discover photo photographs, and that's why we're here, and that's why we'd like to see ideas and pitches, and I agree, photos with the pitches, unless I know them so well, you know, that I wanna see pictures with the pitches too. Um, so what do you look for in a photographer? Like, what are the s maybe skills that you are really looking for when you see somebody's work and you're judging whether you think they can do it. They, they've got what it takes to do it. Maybe you start with India because she can India, okay, <laughs> India. Let's we'll start with what India. What skills do you need? <laughs> I mean, I think that obviously, you know, as a photographer, you're thinking about your framing, you're thinking about your lighting. You don't ever want your technical issues to cloud the conversation, right? So I always say start with your best work your best photographs, that's what you share first. 
And, and I find sometimes when I do portfolio reviews, the photographers sometimes we talk about our we talk about things that aren't there, right? Like we talk about our work, but maybe it's not in the photograph that we're looking at. And so I want to say when you're pitching your work, make sure that what you're talking about is actually the images that you are actually giving me. That I'm actually looking at the work that you're talking about in that way. So start with your best work and try to make sure that nothing technical is blocking the story. So your lighting, all those things are perfect, the framing, so that when you tell the story, when you pitch the work, that people can really see your vision. I think that's going to be the most important. Yeah. Go ahead, Denise. Um, I, it's, it's hard to say yes to all the things that India just said. Um, but also I'm, I'm looking, if you live in Brooklyn or if you live in New York or in, in the States, I want to see that you can also do a story in your neighborhood, right? I see a lot of portfolios where they're out of the country, they're this, this, I'm like, you live in Brooklyn, you can't find a story in Brooklyn. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I want to know that you can... You know, I, I want to know that you can you can do that kind of work. I also um, I don't care if you're you're loud or you're quiet or all those kind of things. I, to me, like your your work ethic. I don't know if I'm if that's the best way to describe it. Like I I know photographers who are very quiet. They say very little, but they are the 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 way in which they work, the detail, the you know all of those kind of things. They matter to mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. right? So if, for for example. If you, um, if I read your caption, right, and it's just the, the, the caption information has an extra juicy quote, like you just have a little bit of extra um, on there. I, I love that. Mm -hmm. So I, I love that a photographer that pays attention to detail and, and just, you don't have to be perfect. We're not asking you to, you know, to be, to be completely flawless, um, but just that hard work, I think, really pays off. Yeah, it's like be knowledgeable know something about what you're showing and uh, what you're pitching. You need to be like the little mini expert about it. Kurt? I, I, th I think it's somebody that can balance both the, the aesthetic power of photography, but also understands how to deliver a message and, and tell a coherent story um, that has strong connective tissue uh, through uh, the photography. Um, you know, a lot of we're talking about websites and photographers representing themselves. So, like, if you get interested in somebody, you go to their website. Well, first thing I look for are the stories. What are, what are the stories that they've done to see how they've presented them in a series? Uh, have they thought about how one works off the other and the pacing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of that story, right? Sequence. And then the captions. Like, uh, I'm glad you brought up captions. If there aren't any captions with the pictures. I'm saying, mm, man, words and pictures are really powerful and work together. And this photographer has decided not to have the other half. And so I, I kind of, I leave. Peas so, and carrots. Yeah. They don't want the peas to touch the carrots on the plate, <laughs> right? That's like me when I was five. But yeah, we need them. We need the words and the pictures, both. Elizabeth. So when you asked the question, I thought you meant what kind of qualities we look for in a photographer? Yes, okay, yes, great. So, absolutely. So I feel like um, you know, a strong visual sensibility is just something you take for granted. That's you know, obvious um, to me. But then you know, I love photographers who are really curious, who want to know everything about everything, or every, especially everything about one particular thing. And um, you know, if they have cool ideas, that's really wonderful. But I also love um, people who are really resourceful and um, mm -hmm. who kind of never give up, <laughs> you know. And if you have access to any particular subculture that's either really interesting that we don't get to see very often, or that is particularly newsworthy, I think that's a real advantage. And um, also. You know, to me, the most important thing a photographer can have is integrity, and I can trust them. But the trouble with that is sometimes you don't find that out until you're really deep into a project already. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I'd say it's a passion. For me, it's really like I want, I want the photographers who don't do a story because they want to do a story. They do a story because they need to do that story. That it like keeps them up at night. This is the kind of stories that you, you have to do it. It's like if you're... DNA, like it's like when I see that, when I see this connection, this personal connection to the work, you know that the work is going to be different, and it sets you apart from all the other photographers who just decided, oh, this is a popular topic. Yeah, that's great. 
I, I always felt also when I was uh, you know, working at the magazine as an editor that one, a skill that I always looked for was a problem solver because every story is going to have a problem. No matter how much research we do, no matter how much we plan, you go out there and you know there's some wacko sort of problem comes up and you know calling the editor is not going to really help and it's going to like they can't take every one of your problems and solve them for you. So the photographers that are out there working and they figure it out and they solve it and I like will never even know that they had that problem. I mean, those people are so valuable, they're diamonds. So thinking about how to be a problem solver as well as a really good photographer is something to, to try to own and develop that as a skill. Uh, we touched on this a little bit, but I, I also want a little bit more about like, so. Where do you find photographers? Where are you looking uh, to see new work and finding photographers? Go ahead. Uh, Instagram, portfolio reviews, um, other publications. Um, you know, like I, there's this one publication in France called Liberation, and they have an amazing photo de department, and every single time they use a new photographer, like, Okay, I need to find a story how with that I, photographer. How did I not know about I this know, person? It's like, oh my God, <laughs> this is freaking amazing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like we, you know, we look at uh, at each other's publications. We look at what we we what we do and and who we work for. But you know, like, don't underestimate like those portfolio reviews here and those meetings here, like those like all these workshops, all like just being in a hallway with with all these photographers. Um, it's you know. It can be anywhere, anytime. Yeah, Elizabeth. Okay, don't laugh, but I have to read this because <laughs> I, I like it that you're reading something. Go I ahead, know. please. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No. Okay, so databases like Women Photograph or Diversify or Vizura, a photo collectives, of course, like Magnum, Seven, Noor, you know, but places also like Ayun or Prime, uh, publications, of course, uh, workshops like Eddie Adams or um, ICP. Judging reviews like the New York Review, I just encourage anybody who feels ready to apply for that particular review. Times it's run, review. run by the New York Times and Photoville and Cooney in collaboration. And festivals like Photoville, love going to Photoville. Uh, the fairs this week, you know, there's photo fairs, there's art on paper, there's uh, the Armory Show, there's so much going on this week, just a lot of them in Javits. And uh, APAD, love APAD. Uh, it's a gallery, you know, an expo of galleries. Exhibitions, uh, live or Zoom events. I love hearing people talk about their work and show their work. Uh, winners of competitions like Critical Mass, which is amazing because they have like 175 judges, so a million people will see your work even if you don't win. Uh, of course, POI, World Press. Uh, books, internships, and, you know, recommendations from friends. I will say personally that social media, I know a lot of, uh, editors, that's their first go-to, and you g all can talk about that. But for me, social media and websites are kind of what I look like look for after. You know, I'll look at them afterwards to kind of check out the people. But these other things are kind of where I come across uh, photographers. You, you didn't leave any for the other panel. I don't think we have anything else to say. You should have made me laugh. <laughs> so we're done. I was just going to yeah, say, no, anybody have yeah, anything no, else no, to no, add? No, Sorry. <laughs> Specific. She um, can do a little <laughs> mic drop. Right? What I tell you about her? What I tell you? It's so good. Go you can give Anybody? examples of all the things yeah, I know. Yeah, no, I have. Yeah, I'm good. And, and you had nothing? No. Anybody? Kurt, anything? Uh, I'm gonna pass. <laughs> Elizabeth I know you're never gonna ask me. Yeah. She's yeah, killing me. I tried to get out of this. Yeah, Elizabeth. <laughs> yes. She's That's so perfect. prepared, right? Yeah, uh, I want you to know I wasn't even supposed to be here. I'm filling in for somebody else who was oh. speaking. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to talk about Elizabeth that. Actually, Elizabeth was supposed to be up here by herself. I know, uh, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> Our support staff. That's, That's true. It. That's true. So uh, I wish we could publish that list somehow for everybody, yeah, right? Yeah, right? She printed Can we? it, yeah. Oh, on that, you'll put, uh, Miriam will put it on the Eddie Adams uh, workshop website because it's a great, it's an it's incredible great list. list. Yeah for you guys to go poke around on, yeah. Um, so, I, I, and I get this a lot, and I got this even this morning, doing portfolio reviews. They're like, uh, for me, of course, they come and say, Sarah, how can I get to the editors at National Geographic and show them my work, right? And so that goes for everybody. Like, how do they find you and show you their work or 
send you their work. I'm not talking at all in this. Come on. Okay, you, you, go, you go last. Yeah, India, what, you want to start? Uh, sure. So I'm just thinking about more museums and curators. And I know that a lot of us, we have referrals. So I would recommend never sit, just cold send your work to an artist curator or museum. Like, it's never a good idea, right? Just to, Or pop up with your portfolio. That's also not really a great idea either. Um, I would say if you can, find someone who can just refer you. You know, um, when you're doing a portfolio review and you meet Elizabeth or you meet someone and say, hey, listen, you know, I'm interested in showing at, I don't know, the MoMA, right? And maybe they have a relationship and they can do an introduction. I find that that's the best way, right? Especially if they don't know you and you don't have a relationship. I think it's really important to try to find someone. That's why it's important to be a part of those platforms that Elizabeth asked, women photograph, doing portfolio reviews. It's an opportunity for you to network for you to build your community, to build relationships and connections so they can give that referral. And they don't have to know you well, right? They could just see your work and say, you know what? I think this would be important if you put this in front of so-and-so. Let them know what your vision is in your portfolio of you. I'm interested in showing at Aperture Foundation, right? Because you'll understand we all know each other despite what we're doing. We're all connected in our community. Whether you're doing you know, fine art photography or photojournalism or documentary, we're all friends for the most part, right? <laughs> So Pretty I would much. say uh, it's important that we that you that you share and talk about your vision during your portfolio review. Yeah, half of the pitches I get um, start with Elizabeth Chris sent me your work. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. You send yeah. me a lot of people, and that's like you know, like that tells me someone already like vouched for their work. Yeah. it is helpful. Yeah, like it's it, like it, it sets you apart from anyone else because there's a connection, and I trust that connection. Yeah, and you get so many. You get so many queries. Kurt? Yeah, I think we, we everyone touched on it. I think that somehow you have to get yourself in front of uh, that picture editor wherever wherever they work. And I, I think the easiest way is, is to, to, to do the portfolio review, which mm -hmm. happens quite often. Mm -hmm. And I bet you if you ask Elizabeth, she could give you a list of all the portfolio <laughs> reviews. <laughs> In 2024. <laughs> Absolutely. No doubt about that. How about you, Denise? I, I, uh, yes to everything, but I would also ask the photo editor how they would like to communicate. I am horrible at email. I have 80,000 emails every day, and I just can't get to them with all the meetings. So if you say, Denise, you know, um, you told me to, to give you a text. I'm just sending a text follow-up. Text me, you know, because they'll say, well, I had your number, but I didn't want to bother you. But that's the way I ask you to, to communicate because uh -huh. I'm not good at email. So ask the photo editor, like, because there's so many different ways that people reach out to you, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, this, that, and the other. There's, there's no way you can check them all. Um, this is something that's a lot, a lot part of our conversation in our photographic community a lot, and I wanted to bring this up. Um, how important is it for you when you're considering an idea from a photographer that they be inside the culture, that they live locally, speak the language, or have some special expertise um, that puts them inside the culture? How, is, that, how, is that important to you when you're thinking about a, like giving uh, somebody, you know, the, the pitch coming from someone or giving them work. And Andy, you look like you're ready. Yeah, you know, I would say as a curator, it's important that the artist, and I use artist and photographer interchangeably, um, aligns themselves with greatness. And what do I mean when I say aligning yourself with greatness? Like if you're gonna tell me about a project you're working on and I ask you about photographers who may do similar work or photographers from the past, it's important for me that you know your history. That you can say, you know what, my work is similar to this, or I'm thinking about this, or I've, I've considered this. And I think as a curator, it allows me to understand your place within art history, mm. where you want to be, where you're thinking about being in art history in the field. And so I think for museum curators specifically, um, it's important for us to have that knowledge so we know how to enter the work in that way. What are you doing to take the work further? And so I always tell my artists to align yourself with greatness, find the individuals who inspire you, and speak about them when you're talking about your work so that they'll know who is moving you forward and where you want to take your voice and your vision. Yeah. Denise? That's a great question. Uh, you know, we've done some stories where I, I have no knowledge about, no, never had the experience or um, am a part of that community, nor, or the photographer is loosely 
and I've hired people as a consult. Um, okay. And so that, you know, because I don't know if it's offensive. I don't know, I don't know what I'm about to get into. Uh -huh. And so I've hired uh -huh. people um, and we've added, that, that's why I said earlier, like how much is this gonna cost me? Because we've added consultation uh -huh. um, so that we don't inadvertently make a mistake and insult an entire community of people. Yeah, that's, that's um, so I, I think it's important that if they are not from the community or of the culture, that you know enough as a photo editor to know that you don't know enough yeah. um, and make the provisions for that. That's great. Kurt? Yeah, I, I've, I, it's almost comforting in a way because they understand the culture and, and the people. And um, so in turn, you can ask questions to understand yourself. Um, I just had two wonderful experiences uh, that I just, you know, I just hold on to this day. is Aji Stiawan who photographed uh, in central Java a community uh, of, of people whose homes were, were being flooded and actually living with the high tides, you know, three feet or so in their homes every day. And it was in his backyard. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other was um, Noriko uh, Hayashi in uh, Tokyo who did a story on uh, uh, aging Japan and mm -hmm. uh, being able to have her t to help me understand the culture uh, was just just terrific. Yeah, that's great. Elizabeth? Well, I don't know that it's a deal breaker, but I do feel like it's really important, you know, and it's, if not that they grew up within the culture, that they live within the culture, that they spent a lot of time there, or they speak the language, or they just have studied it, or just, uh -huh. you know, have a really deep understanding of it. I also think it really depends on the sensitivity of the story. You know, uh -huh. sometimes uh -huh. if it's more sort of general or upbeat, it might not matter so much, but, you uh -huh. know, and maybe this is too sensitive to say, but, you know, if, let's say it's a story about, like, women of color being harassed by, um, white men or something, you know, you're going to be really incredibly careful who you send into a story That's like right. that. But, yeah. So it just can really depend, I think. Mm -hmm. Olivier? Yeah, I think, like, um, it really depends on the story. It depends on the country. It depends on the co the community. It's You you want to do right to uh, the story and to the people in the photos. And so you have to take that into account, like, when you're assigning someone. Yeah. You have to ask yourself those questions. Yeah. Um, we are basically going to turn to questions in, a, in a just a second. Um, I, w uh, I think uh, some of the highlights from what people were saying are also like uh, know your ideas, have ideas, know your ideas, be able to speak about your ideas, show some work, Get maybe not cold calling the editors or the places you want to work, but getting referrals from somebody that can help you break through the pack of, of uh, pitches they're getting all the time. Um, thinking about being the skills, the, all the various skills, including being a problem solver, the details, knowing it. We talked about you know, the idea of photographing uh, stories and in your own backyard, which kind of goes back to the idea of photographing from within your own culture. Um, how, to, uh, t how to use a portfolio review and that whole list, that um, fabulous list. And I, I didn't get to ask about this, but I would add um, contests. Like some people like disparage contests because it's kind of random and you never know and it really depends on the panel. But if you are do put work into a contest, it does elevate your work and gets more eyes on it. Even if you don't win, the people who are looking at the work, they might have really liked it, but it just didn't get the votes, and it gets it, gets it in front of people. But you know yeah. what I would say about that with competitions, because I know there are a lot that um, charge, you know, they have fees, mm -hmm. is look carefully at who the judges are, if yeah. you know, because you just want to make sure it's worth your money to put your work in front of those particular people. And also, for things like um, the Eugene Smith grant and women photograph grants, mm -hmm. there are a lot of times that they will provide waivers for people. If mm -hmm. you can sort of even just say you're in financial need and you belong to a particular affinity group, you can get a waiver from that group and you don't have to pay the fee. So that's yeah, another that's a really good point. Thank you. Okay, we're going to start taking your questions. Um, 
right here in the front row. Wait, please wait for the mic to be delivered to you. Um, I was just hoping you could speak to a line of um, tension that I heard. Um, and I, it's one I've heard before, but I'm just curious where the line is for you all. Because you spoke very much about how important it is to do work that's very much to you and speaks to you and have that in your portfolio and that stand out and like kind of elevate that. But then you also spoke about how important it is to be presenting things and tailoring it to the publication or the gallery so it's appropriate to them. So where is that line for you where you look yeah. at it and go, this is yeah, unique would, versus this stands out? I would say it's kind of, it's, it's, this is kind of common sense, but like if you're a fashion photographer, you probably don't go to, to National Geographic. Yeah. Okay, that's like the easy answer, right? But Denise, you wanted to jump in oh, and say I, something. I, like I, I feel this deeply, right? So I'm... We're local, we're the Philadelphia Inquirer. We're not doing what you know these guys are doing on that level. So for example, if you reached out to me, you would say, Denise, I know this is not generally what you would publish. I just need some feedback on my work, right? Yeah. So just knowing who you're reaching out to, I could absolutely give you feedback and maybe a referral. Like this is really, really good. I think you should talk to blah, blah, blah next, right? We don't do it at my shop, but I can give you feedback on the work, and if I was going to publish this, I think you're missing a few things here, or I think this is great. So I, I can give you feedback, but I cannot do the things that they are able to do, right? And I, that would be the distinction to me. Does that, does that make sense? Is that in line with your question? A little, a little bit. Just, okay. Um, I mean, it definitely speaks to, you can take that and tailor it. Right. It's like, where, where does it cross the line of being too unique? To be too what? unique? To be, to being what? Uh, to be too unique. Think, well, like, think about the, like, you know, you, part of the job of a photographer is knowing that market, and is knowing your market. Um, it's doing the research. It's understanding that, like, you know, they sometime try to do something differently, and I'm able to reach that. It's like this, like, this answers my style of photography. Um, you do not want, like, for example, like, to go too conceptual for the Washington Post, for example. But there's a there's a middle. There's there's ways where it's not too conceptual for the Washington Post, where it actually helps a story to be in a little bit on that sense. So knowing the market, knowing what they publish usually, knowing what they experiment with is part of that job. Um, so you want to bring your voice, but you have to make sure that that voice fits in that publication. Have you ever looked at something that I, I really love this idea of and you are going too far outside and it's like that? Like you don't like yeah, it? like yeah. it happens a lot. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not so sure I understand what's out, too far outside. Outside of what? Yeah, that's what I said. I don't think you can be too unique. Yeah, outside 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 now I want to see your work yeah. now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Bring that up here. <laughs> Gabe, Gabe? One, one more question. Okay. Hey, um, I just finished a printed portfolio and I struggled with the amount of photos I should put in a portfolio. iPads can have an endless stream, but I ended up printing one. So with that, it becomes a very hard copy. And you, and you had said, um, you had talked about um, having um, like an overall theme or a look or a feel in it. But overall, I feel like my portfolio is me, right? So. I was wondering if you can, number one, how many uh, do you see? And then are you able to see the person sometimes even though they're like within different genres of photos? I like, I um, think about the fact like if you're, we're, if we're talking about portfolio reviews, you have 15 minutes. If you have 100 photos to show me, I'm not gonna say a word during it because I'm still looking at the photos by the time I'm done looking at the photos, we don't have time anymore. Um, so think about, you know, you want to force a conversation, and so 20, 25, 30 photos, more than enough. Uh, then you can get really into, into the conversation with the photo editor. Yeah. 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 Elizabeth, do you want to say anything about No. Anybody? Yeah. Nope. Yeah, I think, I think uh, one. one thing that as a photographer, there's, there's photog photog photographs for photographer's sake, just the beauty of, of the image. And then there's uh, the use of photography as a tool to tell a story. And 
that's the difference between showing 10 pictures of yourself or that you like versus telling, showing me a story. It, does that, I don't know if that makes sense to you. It's also, the, the, I think, also the goals you have for the work, right? It depends on what your goals are. Like, what are you hoping to accomplish with this work and also to accomplish in the conversation you're having, like, at the table? Or, like, if you're trying to accomplish getting something published, you know, that's, like, th then you kind of craft your edits for all these various things. Like a gallerist might be happy to see 50 photos. No, 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 right? we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> we're not? Oh, oops, wrong. No, 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 no. Uh, you know, in all, I was thinking like creating a body of work. And when I yeah. say a body of work, it's kind of like, it's like dropping your first album. I use hip hop metaphors, right? So you're dropping your first album, okay? And there's a common theme that brings all your photographs together, all 30. And so when you're telling me the story, it's they're all kind of connected in some way, but obviously they're different images, right? So when you're pitching that story, it's kind of like you're showing your first album, right? You're like, listen, this is my album, this is the theme of all these photographs, this is a story and how they're all connected. And I would say if you have 100 photographs, I personally try to find someone smarter than me to look through them, right? It's not my husband, even though he thinks he's smarter than me. You know? <laughs> like I try to find someone literally smarter than me, like Elizabeth or Denise, or you know, and say, hey, listen, can you look through this real quick and just tell me what I need to take out? Because sometimes as an artist, we're so connected to the work. We're so deep in the work. As my mama says, we can't see the forest from the trees, right? And we are so in it that we need to step out from it and let someone look at it critically. And so I would say, like, you know, find someone smarter than you, right, <laughs> to look through those 100 pictures and say, okay, this is your best 30. This is who you need to show to Sarah, right, like that kind of thing. Yeah. Can I just add yeah, really quickly please. that we are all looking for unique, right? And our, our jobs as photo editors, you know, especially in, in this time where things, you know, we've seen a lot at this point. We're all looking for to see the same thing differently, right? And so we are, are, part of our jobs is to make space for your vision. You know, no, we traditionally don't do a fashion. What was the, what was the, fashion. the fashion shoot? Don't send or, your fashion shoot right, to National to Geographic. Geo. But <laughs> if you do it the, in an interesting way that, that he can make room for, he's going to publish that. So I, I would just encourage you guys to, I, I know you have to eat, right? You have to do work so that you can eat. That's the reality. But can maintain your vision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We want your vision. We are literally up here looking for the next unique thing, the next fashion shoot that is in Nat Geo. And we're going to be like, dude, what the hell? That was <laughs> fabulous, right? It's we true. We want that. We are looking for that. So stay who you are. Yeah. We will make room for you. It just may not be right away. Yeah, I think we're gonna like leave it right there. That was so good, and it's true. Everybody who's taking photographs, you have your own unique vision. You have your own unique way of seeing the world, and s try to stay true to that because that is gonna really, don't try to be anybody else. Be yourself and take those photos that tell, show us the world how you see the world. Thank you. Thank you. Big round of applause. Yes, yes.